Hello everyone, my name is Lauren McGann. I'm a senior BSW student at Ferris State University and the intern for the university's LGBTQ plus resource center. Today I'll be doing a presentation on the aging population of the LGBTQ plus community. So let's begin. Here are some facts we need to know about older LGBTQ plus individuals. LGBTQ plus individuals, uh, older adults, make up a significant share of both overall LGBT, LGBTQ plus population and the larger 65 plus population. There are more than 2.7 million LGBTQ plus adults ages 50 or older living across the US. Older LGBTQ plus individuals are twice as likely to live alone. They're also four times less likely to have children. This can lead older individuals to feel isolated, especially if they are residents in a living facility. 54% of older LGBTQ plus care recipients receive care from their partner and 24% receive care from a friend. LGBTQ plus caregivers are more likely to be doing so in isolation and tend to have poorer mental and physical health. This can be because of the isolation and lack of access to affordable health care. Nearly one third of transgender individuals do not have a regular doctor and report poor general health. One factor that plays into this is insurance and many doctors lack the education of when it when it comes to trans health. 50% of transgender individuals have taught their medical providers about transgender care. Another fact we should know is that 41% of LGBTQ plus older adults report having a disability compared to 35% of heterosexual older adults. I felt that it was important to talk about the oppression of the aging population in the, LD in the LGBTQ plus community because this community faces a lot of it. Fear of discrimination and abuse makes LGBTQ plus seniors five times less likely than non-LGBTQ plus seniors to access crucial social services, including health care, home care, senior centers, housing assistance, meal programs, food stamps, and other public benefits. One survey reported in the American Association of Physicians for Human Rights, 67% of doctors and medical students reported LGBTQ plus patients receiving substandard care or being denied care. About 20% of LGBTQ plus people avoid medical care out of fear of discrimination. Many LGBTQ plus people in the aging population feel they must go back in the closet to receive the services they need. In another, survey, in another survey of agencies serving seniors in the United States, 50% said that the aging population in the LGBTQ plus community would not be welcomed at area senior centers if their sexual orientation were known. Employment, housing, health care, and banking discrimination against transgender individuals is very common, especially for aging transgender individuals. Federal benefits programs are just beginning to remedy past discrimination, but there are still many lingering areas of discrimination where older LGBTQ plus individuals require legal help to access the benefits they need to protect themselves. Often, LGBTQ plus in aging individuals are shunned in the straight community for being gay and in the LGBT community for being old. Nearly 60% of LGBTQ plus older adults report feeling a lack of companionship over 50% reported feeling isolated from others. This community also faces hardships like poverty on many cases. Transgender individuals face such pervasive discrimination that the likelihood of that the people in this community will age into poverty 
is remarkably high. Transgender individuals are nearly four times more likely to have a household income of less than $10,000 per year than the general population. This is despite the findings that 87% of transgender individuals have completed at least some college and 47% have obtained college or graduate degrees. Lack of legal protections of LGBTQ plus individuals in the areas of housing, healthcare, education, and employment financially penalize LGBTQ plus individuals throughout their lives. This leads to an increased need for social safety net programs like SSI, Medicaid, that help them attain economic security and access to health care. Another issue this community faces is lack of access to LGBTQ plus friendly and affordable housing. Housing affordability poses a critical challenge to all low-income seniors and LGBTQ plus older adults also experience difficulty finding and retaining accessible LGBTQ plus friendly housing. When searching for housing, one in eight LGBTQ plus older individuals report they have been discriminated against on the basis of their sexual orientation. One in four older transgender individuals report discrimination on the basis of their gender identity. It has been found that only 13 states have indicated LGBTQ plus friendly housing. LGBTQ plus couples also report differential treatment in seeking placement in senior housing facilities. 200, 200 tests were distributed across 10 different states. Results showed that 48% of same-sex couples seeking housing experienced differential treatment when looking for housing in a senior living facility. SAGE has helped develop 228 new housing units in New York City for older LGBTQ plus individuals. I think it's also important to discuss how caretakers can best support LGBTQ plus residents. Establish a non-discrimination policy for your agency slash program slash facility that includes sexual orientation and gender identity. Ensure cl clients and staff know about the policy and how it works. All staff members should receive continuous training on diversity issues and cult cultural competency. Cover issues related to both sexual orientation and gender identity. Invite speakers, show films, offer, present, offer presentations on LGBTQ plus issues. Make sure that intake assessment and information forms are inclusive of all family forms. Make sure that form choices are broad enough to include a variety of families and caregivers. Use inclusive language such as significant other, partner, and preferred pronouns. Make sure to welcome chosen family members in the same way that biological slash legal family members are welcomed. Include chosen family in decision-making processes. I interviewed the administrator at a nursing home in my community to see what kinds of trainings their staff received. This also gave me the chance to see firsthand the kind of acknowledgement LGBTQ plus residents get in facilities. This facility provides talk about inclusivity during general orientation with the staff. The individual did not receive inclusivity specific training at this facility or previous facilities in which they used to run. When asked about LGBTQ plus programs for their residents, they stated that they did not currently have any. They, did, they do not think that they have any LGBTQ plus residents, but said that if they did, they would use inclusive language, communicate with the staff to use the resident's preferred pronouns. They would also make sure the social worker is go, doing frequent wellness checks and monitor for so, psychological well-being. When asked if they had any connection with their local LGBTQ plus community, they said they did not, but they would like to. Research shows that this is how this is how many facilities 
a run in regards to their LGBTQ plus residents, unaware if they have LGBTQ plus residents, unaware of the necessity of training, but knowing that there needs to be change. I had the opportunity to read about the queer senior housing issues currently going on in Seattle. This conversation highlighted the housing issues that are going on all over all over for older LGBTQ plus individuals. Seattle is struggling to implement queer senior housing. The executive decisions are being made by mainly white, cis, and able-bodied able men. No representation for disabled individuals, seniors, or trans folks. The space picked for the housing was less than ideal when it comes to the safety of the people of color and trans folks. Advisory board is needed that reflects the most marginalized in the community. Lastly, here are some helpful resources for older LGBTQ plus individuals. SAGE, Advocacy and Services for LGBTQ plus Elders. They conduct individual and facility trainings, they provide resources for the community, and they help to inform. National Resource Center on LGBT Aging conducts trainings as well, and they provide local resources. MAP, Movement Advancement Project, provides resources on LGBTQ plus older adults. GLARP, Gay and Lesbian Association of Retiring Persons, help to develop and operate retirement communities that are openly LGBTQ plus friendly, and they promote, provide, and support education on aging.